I mentioned, I'm Connie Lee from Deloitte Tech, and I will spend the next 15 minutes to discuss high-level general rules related to corporate income tax on outbound investments. And I will also provide a couple examples to compare the tax, U.S. tax under current tax law versus under the Biden administration tax reform. Um, when we talk about outbound, we generally mean U.S. persons investing and doing business outside the U.S. They can do business in a foreign country through a branch, a corporation, or a partnership. For my today's discussion, I'm going to focus on U.S. corporations doing business in a foreign country through a corporation. So as you can see from the slide, I actually have a picture there and I'm going to use this structure to explain uh, you know, a couple of changes throughout the U.S. international tax history. So in this picture, I have a U.S. corporation that owns 100% of a foreign subsidiary one and also 100% of a foreign subsidiary two. They can, be in, in, they can be formed in any countries outside of U.S. So as you probably can see from the slide, on the left side, you have 1962 Revenue Act, Tax Reform Act of 1986, and 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Of course, U.S. has many tax reforms throughout the years. I have only listed the major ones here. So before 1962, before the Revenue Act, in the picture, let's say if a U.S. corporation sells its inventory to a wholly owned foreign subsidiary, for example, if it's formed in Bermuda, um, it's a Bermuda corporation, which then resells the inventory for a huge markup around the world, the profits earned by the Bermuda company is not taxed in the U.S., is not taxed in Bermuda, is not taxed anywhere. So this is how it worked prior to 1962. Now, the 1962 Revenue Act introduced control foreign corporation and subpart S rules. So in my picture again here, because U.S. corporation owns more than 50% of foreign sub one and foreign sub two, foreign sub one and foreign sub two are both considered controlled foreign corporations and therefore subject to the subpart F rules. So what this subpart F rules does is it painted the forms of income earned by a controlled foreign corporation on the current basis. So in my example, prior to 1962, foreign sub one, which is a Bermuda company, when U.S. sells products to it and it has a huge markup by reselling the product to the world, nothing was taxed, right? The foreign subs earnings not taxed anywhere. 1962 Revenue Act changed it and it says the income earned by foreign sub one is subpart F income and therefore should be taxed in the U.S. currently. So it's that's the big change from um, 1962 Revenue Act. Now let's jump to the next tax reform, which is a huge one. It's called Tax Reform Act of 1986. So under this Tax Reform Act of 1986, the subpart F rule actually got extended, um, you know, to expand it to cover more areas. So for in, in the same picture again, U.S. would tax on the net income, earned by U.S. corporations, the local country would tax the earnings earned by foreign sub-1 and foreign sub-2. But remember, we have subpart F rules. So subpart F rules makes U.S. can tax the income earned by foreign sub-1. Now, let's assume foreign sub-2 doesn't generate any subpart F income. It only generates non-subpart F income. So under this 1980s, 86 Tax Reform Act, U.S. does not have the right to tax the earnings by foreign sub-2 unless there's an actual repatriation from foreign sub-2 back to U.S. So that's the 1986 Act. 
So again, under this 1986 Act, earnings from foreign sub one is taxed in U.S. currently, while earnings from foreign sub two is deferred and not taxed in U.S. until there's the actual cash repatriation. Now, the next major tax reform is called 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, TCJA. So this TCJA brought in a lot of international key provisions. Um, the first one I would like to introduce is, you know, the one-time transition tax. So that's the second bullet point um, on, on this one. Remember in my prior example where under 86 X, earnings by foreign sub two is not currently taxed in the U.S. until there's an actual repatriation. So this 2017 TCJA Act changed this. So under 2000 17 TCJA Act. All of the untaxed earnings earned by foreign sub two from 1986 to 2017 would be taxed by the U.S. as a one-time tax. Now, after that, if you want to actually repatriate tax back to the U.S., it would be most mostly tax-free because U.S. allows for a dividend receipt deduction of 100%. Right. So, and also because all of the earnings were already taxed under this one-time transition tax, so repatriation should be tax-free, other than some FX um, gains and losses. The TCJA also introduced another key provision for international tax area is called guilty or global intangible low tax income. So basically, back to my example again, where I said foreign sub one generates the part F income foreign sub two generates non subpart F income. So it started after the one-time transition tax, starting from calendar year and 2018, earnings earned by foreign sub two would be taxed currently in the US under this key provision called guilty. And then another key provision that would impact quite a bit of clients, um, US multinationals is this foreign derived intangible income. And I will give an example when we talk about um, FDII in the next couple of pages. So um, next, um, let's talk about, you know, we, we all heard about Biden administration tax reform. Um, so that's another big one that um, we are expecting. So in the next few slides, I'm going to show you the comparison between the current law and also the Biden Green Belt. So the, I, I am going to talk about the three major ones that would that impact a lot of my clients, but you know other provisions are also listed here that may impact you or your company. So um, in the interest of time, I'm only going to focus on three. So the first one is the U.S. corporate tax law. You probably already heard about this. Under current tax law, U.S. are tax, U.S. corporations are taxed at 21%. But under the proposed um, change for next year, U.S. would be taxed at 28%. So that's a 7% increase. The next change is called guilty tax rate. Remember, guilty is regarding the earnings by foreign sub two in the prior picture. So under current tax law, guilty tax rate is 10 and a half percent, while under the proposed law is 21%. Now, there are also two key changes impacting the guilty calculation. So the first one is called uh, per country calculation. So under current law, let's say in my foreign sub one where I generated loss and foreign sub two generated income, I can aggregate the two and only report the net tested income as guilty in my guilty calculation. Under the proposal, um, the Biden Green Book proposal, um, guilty would have to be calculated on a per country basis. So if foreign sub one and foreign sub two are formed in two different countries, you cannot net loss from one sub to income from another sub. So that would substantially increase some of the company's guilty calculation. The second impact would be in the current law, um, it allows a 10% return on of tangible assets 
under um, current law where it would not be subject to guilty. Now, under the green belt, it's eliminated. So let's say if your foreign sub one has tangible assets, it generated you know, income, 10% of that um, income would be exempt in the guilty calculation. When under the proposal, if it's eliminated, that would increase your guilty basis. So uh, those are the two items. The third item that I would like to discuss is called FIDI, Foreign Derived Intangible Income, and that's on slide number five. Um, and so we call it FIDI or FDII, as you can see on the bottom. So basically the concept is that if a U.S. corporation sells two products only and both products are exactly the same, and they generate the same profit, but one product is sold to a U.S. customer and one product is sold to a foreign customer to be used outside of the U.S., the tax rate is actually different, even though they are both um, reported by the U.S. corporation. So the profit that's generated from the sale to a domestic customer is subject to the 21% tax rate. The product that's sold to the foreign customer is actually subject to a lower tax rate. And you can go as low as 13.125. So this is the benefit that's offered to a lot of U.S. corporations. But under the Biden Green Belt, this FDII benefit is repealed. So this would have a big impact to U.S. corporations as well. So um, the next few pages I have listed um, quite a bit of difference between the current law and the green book, um, but I'm not going to go over here in the interest of time. So I would like to actually explain to you two examples. And in these two examples, as you probably can see, um, I'm going to show you the U.S. tax liability between current tax law and the Biden administration tax reform. And I am only going to show you the U.S. federal tax rate change from 21% to 28%, and also the guilty tax rate change from 10.5% to 21%. And then also the two key components that I I discussed earlier, which is a country by country calculation under the tax reform, the new tax reform that we are expecting, and also the elimination of the 10% of the um, Q by. So, because of those four different changes, if you will, you will see that the U.S. tax rate would tax expense would actually um, increase by more than um, 50 percent. So, in my example, and you can look at it later. I am not going to walk through um, step by step, but basically in this example, you have a U.S., ABC U.S. owns 100% of ABC APAC and 100% of ABC EMEA. And the facts, are, the facts and the assumptions are the same for both examples. And the income are also the same. The tax rates are also the same. Local tax pay are also the same because there are no changes to the local tax, right? It's 20%. So local tax is also the same. But because of the U.S. federal tax rate changes, guilty tax rate changes, like I said, in the middle column, the last row, you can see that the U.S. tax liability actually changed. So in this current law, it's only 210000 And this 200000 is really the 21% times U.S. domestic income of a million. Now, the guilty income, you know that we said guilty would be taxed in the U.S., but because of how the way how it's working under the current tax law, the foreign tax credit, which is, you know, taxes paid in local jurisdictions, is sufficient enough to offset the U.S. residual tax on guilty. So we did not have to pay anything extra. Now, if we go to the Biden proposal, um, you will see that actually the tax change from 210,000 and to the next page is actually 330,000. And this is because one, the federal rate change. So even with a million dollars U.S. domestic income at 28%, you have to pay 280,000. And in addition, because of the way how 
duty is calculated, um, you actually would have U.S. residual tax on guilty. So the tax rate increased by more than, um, I'm sorry, not tax rate, the U.S. tax liability increased by more than 50%. So um, that's all from my presentation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, maybe we can talk about in the Q&A section. Uh, back to you, Vinona. Uh, 